Good afternoon, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with the review of the weekend reports for July 23rd, 2011. We have a market that is in bullish normal conditions. On an annual basis, it's at 60 out of 100 on weekly RSI 14, 95 out of 100 or overbought on the 10-day NDX. Percent stretch above the 200-day moving average is back up into the yellow at 5.66%, an improvement over last week. And the slope of the 50-day moving average is also up into the yellow, uh, almost flat at minus 0.03% rated at neutral. ADX has declined even further to 13.7 as this week's uh, upward pressure uh, balances last week's selling pressure uh, for a more sideways market than before. ATR percentage is stabilized in the normal range about 1.21%. Uh, no change to the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. Uh, next reevaluation will be about next week this time. Uh, no change in the ETF2. Uh, they got some stops that need to be adjusted. The theoretical exposure is at 80%, model portfolios at 100%. Looking at the uh, weekly health check, vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days of look back period. Solid black line in the middle is the slope of the regression line. The outer black lines are the channel created by the maximum excursion from uh, the regression line, which happened about uh, July 8th. Uh, horizontal purple line, the swing high goes back to 137 in uh, early May. Uh, the dotted purple lines represent resistance levels from previous support uh, and resistance price levels. Uh, the red box represents a 5% pullback from the previous swing high at 137. And that's this uh, vertical red line. The second uh, red box represents a 10% pullback. In this case it would end up being below the 200 day moving average represented by the shaded blue area. Uh, this horizontal red line represents the previous swing low at about 126, and uh, that's a support level that this that this time would now be about uh, into bear market territory, uh, being more than 2% below. Williams percent R, the short term look, uh, we're now in overbought conditions. Uh, you can see the P, uh, price performance oscillator, which is a uh, surrogate of the MACD histogram. Uh, the jaws just starting to open up. Again, after a slight pullback here, this looks favorable to me. And the, Mac, the uh, histogram just went positive. Cons uh, I've added uh, these two major trend lines just to show what kinds of moves these, um, this op oscillator can, can identify. You can see uh, middle of May when the jaws went closed and sold off sharply, never crossing again to this green circle. You can see that constituted this red line uh, this trend line here. When the jaws opened and then went up for about uh, three weeks to this, uh, to this point where they closed, you get this green line trend from the, almost the swing low all the way up to this uh, high point and pullback. Uh, slight sell-off here, but you can see price has diverged from the, uh, the uh, signal line going below the red line. And so uh, now with the jaws opening up, again this will be another run, uh, another run at 137 potentially. Uh, but when we look at support and resistance levels here, here's what I'm seeing: we got to 137, sold off to 126. We got to 135, sold off to 130, and now we ended up Friday with a with a doji at about 134 and a half. Now, if we can get some resumption next week in the face of all the the debt ceiling shenanigans in Washington, may they all be fired. Um, if this turned out to be another turning point here, uh, then what we would see is uh, another lower high uh, without even fully testing 137. If it sells off and goes below 130, that would be very negative. Uh, but if it holds, uh, if it holds above this 131, pauses here, and then resumes through 137, then that would be very favorable. The only reason I can see that happening is if people thought that Europe was that much worse um, 
in the in handling their debt crisis than we are handling ours. Uh, it's a toss up right now, which set of politicians will screw it up further. But uh, that's a political opinion and not necessary for trading. Uh, the slope of the regression line then uh, is still positive. It's above the zero line, although it's flattening out a little bit. But I will s point out to you that uh, this slope will continue to be good provided price. Uh, can get through 137. So even a slight pullback to 132-ish, which would be about testing the 10-day moving average, or even 131, the 50-day moving average, as long as it holds over here uh, and then makes another run at 137, the slope will be fine. And uh, we could look at this as a generally sideways market with with uh, bullish tendencies. Uh, to dip below 127, though, uh, would, uh, would now put that uh, bullish move at risk. So I think what we have is a sideways market with bullish tendencies, uh, with room for optimism, but also uh, re uh, reason to believe in pessimistically. And so I say, like I've continued to say, this is a trader's market with, uh, with the opportunity to grab intraday moves certainly there. If you look at the, the real bodies on these candles, uh, there's lots of intraday trends. They're just not following through in one way or the other. And that's why ADX here is below 15, and it's a, it keeps being a toss-up between plus DI and minus DI. So this is trader's market sideways. You should be looking at oscillators, band trading opportunities. Make sure you're getting paid, um, uh, and uh, a bird in the hand is definitely worth one in the bush, two in the bush, even, I should say. Um, ETF regional report, the top 10. A uh, little change from last week, uh, although we have uh, we have increased the allocation strategy up to 80% invested. Uh, eight of the 10 are above their moving average filter. Uh, strongest uh, sectors, we have uh, SPY at 72 is better than EFA at 60, so the world is favoring the U.S. right now. Among the U.S. indices, mid caps, technology, small caps, and the large caps. Mid caps and technology. Uh, are uh, leading the way right now among the 10, the two weakest being Latin America and uh, Asia less Japan. World market model. Um, leadership among the other asset classes, commodities took a bit of a break, uh, weak, weakness in oil, uh, pulling down the blended commodities. Uh, gold and silver continue to look pretty good, um, getting paid by quality company bonds it looks good. Uh, small cap growth in the U.S., uh, U.S. generally above average. Uh, weakness in Europe, Asia, international markets across the board. Swiss franc remains strong. This is about three months in a row. We can see that. Defensive sectors continue to dominate. Staples, utilities, health care. Uh, finance uh, all, still in the red, although last week it had a pretty good run. Uh, and uh, that may have been a dead cat bounce or a value play. Or perhaps a hint ahead of time that there is a that there actually is a debt ceiling deal um, in the works, just waiting to be sprung. I see that maybe as some front running of that possibility. Um, energy is continuing to uh, to do pretty well. Industrials are lagging. So again, I think it's flight to quality, flight to the U.S. Um, not much to choose from in terms of trends. Uh, when the U.S. even amidst its debt concerns is the leading area among the regions, um, that's not a healthy global uh, economy. And again, risk measured, uh, get paid first, protect your assets. Uh, there's, uh, there's no runaway trends that we're missing. Little change in the 100 by 200 crossover system. Again, it's the U.S. Uh, indices and usually the, uh, the defensive sectors that are doing well. The globals are still in cash, as are the growth stories in the U.S. Little change among the uh, the top 30 in the ETF2 database. Again, it's the de defensive plays. We've been saying this for a couple months now. Staples, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, healthcare, biotech, Swiss franc, biotech, uh, uh, U.S. real estate, energy, medical, retail, gold, gold. So all the usual suspects, dynamic utilities. Uh, for the uh, liquidity report, again, the top 30 by average daily dollar volume. Those in green are highlighted 
as they are uh, intraday uh, volatile. Silver has moved up to position number four and gold in number five. They were five and six a couple weeks ago. Uh, silver still volatile enough and tradable intraday. The VIX at 4.88 is still the most intraday volatile, yet that's, that's backed off quite a bit from its previous highs. So that's the uh, weekly strategy report. Defensive sectors, keep your powder dry, measure your risk, uh, take the gains when you have uh, when you have them in hand, make bank. Uh, the defensive sectors are looking reasonable. Occasionally you'll get some plays like finance where uh, oversold allows for a little bit of a bounce. Um, I'm not sold on that as a turnaround in the sector. I think that it really is a trading opportunity from oversold conditions. So keep your powder dry and your risk measured. And uh, we'll move on now to uh, uh, to the daily report. I won't re repeat the uh, the top line here. Let's see if we can expand that a little bit. Okay, uh, taking a look at the at the gap stat. Uh, Twelve times in the last thirty, we've had the market gap down, and it's about a balanced in terms of the follow through. Not much to choose from. Gaps up, however, have been rewarding the gains. Uh, almost three to one, and uh, the gains have been larger than the losses. Uh, range stat for S&P remains about 1.44. You can see on the time series for the 10-day NDX, we're now in overbought conditions. Pivots in SPY at one th above 134 now, and IWM testing 84. No signals in overreaction and channeling. Uh, volatility is right back to the six-month average on the black line here at 1.21. Uh, trendiness in the market declining. Now it's under 15 is the ADX plus DI slightly had a minus DI. So um, the bullish, the bullish pressure has been, if anything, a little more than the bearish. 551 signals in uh, Cat Johnson Johnson Cisco, and um, you can see the 3060 stealth candidates. These are the ones that have been quietly doing better. Hewlett Packard, Cisco, Microsoft. That's consistent with the slow, sneaky resurgence of technology lately. Microsoft continues to be one of my short-term favorites. Uh, the Dow 30 tactical summary, uh, lots of dojis to choose from. The uh, 551Ws and Caterpillar and Johnson & Johnson, you can see. Uh, max pain range compressions. Uh, Caterpillar has some potential for me based on that uh, one-day sell-off, um, that sharp sell-off. Uh, Microsoft, McDonald's, Hewlett-Packard continue to be short-term consistent winners. Looking at the same uh, summary from the ETF 30 tacticals. Lots of dojis to choose from. Uh, no patterns, um, no pattern trades setting up. Uh, and you can see the top five based on max pain range compression. Uh, coal, silver, Technology. Both of the technologies are looking pretty good. There's been a uh, a sharp vote against volatility, which I find remarkable, given given the uh, the deadline that's approaching. I think the market is, you know, the savvy tactical players are thinking that there's going to be a um, a uh, midnight hour deal cut that averts disaster, which will be responded with a relief rally, and that's why I think the VIX is so low. And uh, I think that's a, that would be a signal for the U.S. markets uh, to continue their dominance over Europe. It's easier to believe in a centralized U.S. single country solution uh, than a European comprehensive solution simply because of the, uh, the differing nature of the political uh, systems. I think the U.S., it's easier to sell that in the popular press, and everybody wants to believe the U.S. will get through it. So... I think that's where I think that's what we're seeing in the VIX. Nobody wants to bet against that. Uh, in terms of frogginess, um, on the daily frogs, utilities and industrials, Exxon Mobil, GE, and Caterpillar near the top of the list, among uh, some more ETFs here: Latin America Real Estate, Japan, and the Diamonds. Um, I'll leave it on there for your reference. Signal to noise ratios. Um, again, these are this reflects uh, how much of the daily price is net of the range and these are the ones that have um, larger than average uh, trendingness intraday uh, and so although silver isn't really froggy uh, it does have 
intraday trends, which is and so does uh, natural gas and the NASDAQ 100, which is why they're in the green. The ones that have very little follow through or directionality intraday are these ones that are down in the red. It's harder to make the case for them being a good uh, intraday trades systematically. Um, fail stat, again, just for your reference, this, this is just showing how far the symbols f have uh, typically fallen from the open to the low of the day during the 30-day look-back period. And you should know what this number is in the fail average and then the plus one standard deviation so you can get an idea of whether or not that intraday turning point really is consistent with how far it's fallen uh, in the last 30 days before it may have turned around. So for intraday traders, this, uh, this fail stat has some utility. Um, looking at uh, some additional market mosaic indicators, the slope of the regression line, the R squared at 0.639, suggesting a much a stronger uh, upward bias here as uh, is, is truly what's happening because R squared is going up. You can see this move off that swing low from 126 has uh, been accompanied by a pretty powerful shift in the uh, slope of the regression line. It's now about as strong as it's been um, this this slope right here as it has been in the last six months. We still have the jaws open right here and so the upward move is not over yet. Um, we've moved one standard deviation off the low in terms of percent stretch so that's uh, that could be considered as healthy. Uh, recovering some of its mojo and starting to pull away from that 200-day moving average again. Intraday range stat percentages, just I'll leave those on for your reference. And the hold stat. Uh, th this little bounce in the 5 and the 10-day, because these numbers are generally lower than one standard deviation on the z-scores, uh, that means this little bounce has not run its course you know, historically, there's still room for it to uh, take Friday's doji and continue on up to test 137. Uh, the Dow 30 quality score, again, I like red and then improvements, and so that gives you these columns that are in, these colors that are in green in the first column, which is the 30, 60 day uh, SQN divergence. So I like DuPont, especially like Microsoft. Look at the change, it's gone from yellow at minus 2.68 SQN to 3.42 just in a matter of six weeks. Uh, extremely powerful move in Microsoft. That doesn't catch you by surprise if you've been paying attention these last two months. Um, Cisco has actually turned the corner, Verizon, and Home Depot. Among the ETFs, those divergences, uh, NASDAQ and um, the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P technology, Russell small caps, and XLY. This is all good news for the U.S. in terms of um, ability to respond to uncertainty is how I interpret that. Um, uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic on the U.S. Safe zone channel. I ask you want use an elders uh, methodology here with my adaptation. Uh, more towards the high end of the channel. That's a coiled spring looking to go higher. Pivots calculated for daily, weekly, and monthly for all the usual suspects. Leave that for your reference. Uh, the alpha stat compares the slope of the 30-day regression line of different indexes after subtracting out the market. And you can see technology has been making the move at the expense of the other U.S. indexes. Uh, all the commodities uh, making a resumption of strength. And even the globals have, have made, their, made their move. Uh, only one signal in Caterpillar on the red side. That's because of that sell-off on uh, Friday. In Caterpillar, or last week in Caterpillar, using the Elder Safe Zone. And now I want to shift to charts of interest. Um, this is the main reason I love trading Alcoa. Very, very cyclic and uh, sinusoidal. Boeing has allowed those kinds of moves. Uh, hold it, both of them holding at the uh, at the 50 and the 20. Uh, I mean, if there was not a better 
doji signal in the world than Alcoa. I don't know what it is. Tiny little doji right at the confluence of the 20 and the 50 and declining volume on a 50% retracement. If it breaks north of here, that's a favorable vote. Um, Caterpillar, uh, the one-day harsh sell-off looks to me like an opportunity to buy a good company at a value price. Uh, Cisco, um, we'll see if that one big candle on Thursday can follow through. I think the market's waiting for news from this weekend. Chevron doesn't really have to worry. Uh, that consistent rise in oil prices from when the strategic reserve was sold, um, it's really responded well to that. Um, strength in the energies, weakness in, our, in agriculture. Uh, EFA and EPP about the same, it's the same chart uh, in either one. Let's get this just a little larger. Okay, looking at page two. Uh, you see uh, Brazil and uh, Latin America at about the same posture. Gains, finding support at previous support, and now a 50% retracement right at the 20 and 50 day moving averages, same case. Strength in technology has supported uh, Hewlett Packard here. Uh, Intel has recovered its mojo. Uh, it's getting ready to break out of a triple top. Uh, Russell's look pretty favorable to me. Slope of the 20 uh, is positive. The 50's at least flat. It held support at the 50. Um, looks good. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, one of the strength leaders in the defensive plays. Uh, Kraft, fantastic support here on the 20. Uh, Coca-Cola and McDonald's, uh, both just excellent leaders. Now, you might be concerned, as I am, about this being a shooting star doji here. We'll see what the, what the deal is on McDonald's. Um, if this can hold above 88, wow, is that ever going to be good? Uh, breaks below 88, guys will be looking for the uh, gap to close down <clears throat> to about 87, but still that's uh, about the strongest pattern um, with only a little bit of tactical concerns here. Uh, mid caps, the strongest uh, of the indexes, the strongest index among the ETF2, strength in Microsoft coming as no surprise, gets above 28 and it's off to the races. Silver has held up very well. This little bit of volatility didn't scare it. This looked like buying opportunities in retrospect at 38. If you can get above 40, that'll be an important psychological boost. Uh, oil continues to rebound from the strategic reserve uh, symbolic gesture. The VIX continues to suffer. That That's, pre that's betting against uh, failure in the U.S. debt ceiling talks. I think they're still expecting that it's just posturing for political effect right now. Uh, Walmart uh, has done pretty well, testing the double top at 54, next target 55 and a half. Among the XL series uh, materials, surprisingly strong. Um, energy just taking off and going. Uh, this is that nice little tactical bump in financials. Uh, we'll see if that selling Friday though leads to more selling uh, it's still been very, very weak. Uh, industrials, tactical pause, a technology here among the S&P, breaking out to a new high. you got to like that XLK. That's better than the Qs. Uh, consumer staples have recovered their mojo. Utilities continue to be great intraday trades. Look at the, size, the relative size of the real bodies of the candles. Uh, healthcare. Uh, you can still buy value here, and it's above its moving averages. Consumer discretionary uh, held strong on the 20, and um, can still get if you can get through 42, that'll be good news. Exxon Mobil, uh, I'd be looking to preserve some profits here, uh, but the energy sector has been good, um, and certainly you would expect that to continue as governments try to print their way out of debt. So those are uh, the review of the weekend reports for. Uh, July 23rd, plenty of things to choose from. Uh, keep your powder dry and risk measured.